how to police proof your phone before heading out to protest. What's going on Tech Squad? Listen, normally on this channel, I'm having a good time talking to you about some of my favorite or least favorite consumer electronics. However, at a time like this in our country where you can witness common civilians getting beaten, abused, and even killed by the law enforcement who took an oath to protect and serve, it's hard to come on here and just talk about some gadget that I think you should go and spend your money on. So in that vein, this video has no sponsor and has all ads disabled. However, if you want to contribute to a fundraiser to help the cause at hand, you'll find links down below. Now you can log into any social media platform right now and you'll see photos and videos of hundreds of thousands of people rising up in protest due to the continued general mistreatment of minorities and the specific murder of George Floyd May he rest in peace. Oh, what do you want? I can't breathe. Please, the knee of my dick. I can't breathe shit. Uh -huh. Bro, get up, get in the car, man. I will. Get up, get in the car. I can't move. By Minneapolis police officer David Chauvin, which is just the latest in a long line of recent black deaths and mistreatment at the hands of police officers, including the killing of Breonna Taylor and the inexplicable ignoring of Ahmaud Arbery's killers until it went viral on social networks. And again, may they all rest in peace. Peaceful protest is a legal right here in America. And in response, you'll see law enforcement officers, the police, whatever you want to call them, taking liberties and attacking civilians, as well as public service officials and even members of the clergy, as we've seen over the past couple of days. One example happened here in Seattle yesterday. A large group was standing and chanting with no violence to be seen. Then a police officer reached out and grabbed someone's umbrella from them. The person held onto their umbrella as it's their property, and another officer started spraying tear gas not just at the person holding the umbrella, but at several people who had nothing to do with it. Then other officers joined in and within seconds, an entire peaceful gathering was being pepper sprayed and then shot at. It's disgusting and it's sad. So I was thinking about how I could use this platform to help in any way that I can. As I mentioned earlier on this channel, I talk about consumer electronics. These are the devices that citizens are using to tell the stories of what's happening in real time or near real time. The smartphones that people are carrying are telling the story of an uprising. So today I figured the best way that I can help is to show you how to police proof your smartphone and share the settings you need to know about before you head out to protest. Now, here's the deal. Your data belongs to you. And until there's a warrant dictating that you turn that data over, you have a legal right to privacy. However, I think we've seen that in a lot of cases, the law doesn't matter and some cops are going to do whatever they feel justified in doing, whether it's legal or not. So here's a list of tips that you should be familiar with before you head out to protest, but they're also good to know in general, anytime you're dealing with law enforcement, police, or anyone who may want to take and access your smartphone. Now, first things first, before you leave, make sure you have a good recent backup of your phone. It should also be noted that when I give steps for Android in particular, I am using a Google Pixel 4. So if you're using a different Android device, just search for the settings that I mentioned within your settings app, since they'll likely be laid out differently depending on the device. Okay. Once you have your backup, we are ready to lock down your phone. And there are a few ways to do this. The first tip may be the most important one. So if you don't watch anything else in this video, at least watch this one and get familiar with it. This is how you lock down your phone in an instant, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. This will instantly make your phone require a passcode to unlock rather than fingerprint or facial recognition. On an iPhone 8 or newer, hold down the power button and the volume up button at the same time for two seconds. This will bring up an emergency screen, which you can then cancel out of. Now your password or passcode will be required to get into your phone. The nice thing about the iPhone is you can hold down the power and volume up buttons without needing to tap on anything extra to engage the lockout. On Android, go into settings and then security. Under device security, make sure to enable the power button instantly locks option. Then go into settings, display, lock screen, 
and turn on show lockdown option. Now, whenever you hold down the power button on your Android phone, you'll see a new lockdown option that you can select to disable lock screen notifications and biometric unlocking. That's the big one. Now let's jump into the rest. Before you head out, turn off facial recognition and fingerprint authentication entirely. Make sure to have a long passcode or password. This makes it a lot harder for police to crack your security if they take your phone from you. Setting a passcode or password also enables encryption on both iOS and Android. Next, go into your display auto lock settings and change it to the shortest amount of time possible. Basically, if you aren't actively using your phone for something, you want it to lock and require your code to be usable again. Then add a SIM pin so that if someone does take your phone, they won't be able to eject your SIM card and put it into a different phone and then impersonate you. On Android, you go into settings, security, and SIM card lock. On iOS, you go into settings, cellular, and SIM pin. Now, if someone does get access to your physical SIM card, they will also need to know your pin in order to use it in a different device. Okay, now, even though we have the hardware locked down, let's not take the software for granted. One setting I recommend turning on before heading out, if you don't have it turned on already, is automatic backup of photos and videos. If you happen to record or photograph an officer mistreating anyone, or breaking the law, there's a chance they may want to do whatever they can to get that content erased. Take this tip to the next level and have a trusted friend or family member monitoring your cloud data remotely and have them make local saves of whatever you capture while you're out. Next, make sure you set up secondary authentication wherever possible for your apps. I've seen some people complain that two-factor authentication is annoying, but that's how security works. To make something more secure, you have to make it less convenient. For example, it's more convenient to just walk through an unlocked door than it is to unlock a door that's been locked. It's more convenient to have no home screen lock on your phone than it is to type in a code or use biometrics, but the alternatives are more secure. Passcodes and two-factor authentication give you an extra layer of protection if someone tries to get into your apps. Set protection on any apps that allow it and log out of any critical apps that don't allow it, like Facebook, which only requires it for the initial login. Next, once that's done, secure your notifications. You don't wanna have your notifications set to be readable when your phone is locked if somebody gets a hold of your device. So either just turn off your notifications altogether while you're out or set them to only show previews of the notification data when your phone is unlocked. In iOS, you go into settings and then notifications to do this. And on Android, you can turn off notifications on your lock screen under settings, app and notifications, and then notifications. Next, a lot of people don't know this one, but you can keep one app at the forefront of your device while keeping everything else behind your passcode. It's a feature called guided access on iPhones and screen pinning on Android. Let's say you have an app that you're accessing regularly while you're out like maps, but you wanna lock down the rest of your phone. These features allow you to basically make that app sticky on your device. If anyone tries to access anything else on the phone, they'll need your passcode to get through. You'll find screen pinning on Android under settings, security, and guided access under settings accessibility on iOS. Okay, now that we have the hardware and the software locked down, there's one more category that we should touch on. In a situation like this, it's good to have someone who can remotely access the location of your phone and wipe it from afar if anything goes wrong. It should also be said that you'll be temporarily giving up a little privacy to a trusted family member or friend in this case. First, let them know that you plan to head out to a protest and then agree on specific times where you'll check in with each other. From there, be sure to stick to the times that you've agreed upon. In addition, have an agreed upon time where if you haven't connected, that they should assume that your phone has been lost or stolen and they should then go into your iCloud or Google accounts and remotely wipe your device. 
This will delete all data from your phone and set it to factory conditions. If this happens and you have a backup at home, it's more of an inconvenience than anything else. But if someone did end up with your device, at least they don't have your data as well. Now, if that's too much responsibility to lay on someone else for your tastes, then at the very least, be sure to share your location with one or more trusted contacts using Apple's Find My or Google's trusted contacts feature. This obviously won't help if your phone is lost or confiscated, but at least your friends will know where your phone is at all times while you're out. All right, so there you have it. If you're going to go out and join in a protest, please be smart, stay aware, and be careful. I hope these tips help even a little bit with keeping you and your data safe. If the news you've been seeing and the things you've been reading and watching recently have you feeling like you want to donate to help, you can check out the fundraiser down below. Before I go, let me shout out two other videos I recommend you guys checking out. One by Dom Esposito. And sadness in my heart over this this whole thing, you know? And, and to anybody out there that supports racism or hate, cold-blooded murder, anything like that, I mean, you can just go and one by John Morrison. It took days for the cop that killed George Floyd to be arrested. There was a protester who was arrested before the cop that took a life. That's insane. I will leave links to both of those videos down below as well. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support as always. Take care of each other and I will catch you in the next video.